thank you uh, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Niraj Nepal. Uh, I am a postdoc at Temple University uh, in Professor Adrian Rosinski's group. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Santos Neopane. Uh, he's my colleague and uh, as a friend. Uh, Santos finished his uh, bachelor's and master's degree in physics from Tiruvan University, Nepal, in 2015. Uh, then he engaged in teaching activities for two years back home. Uh, after that, he came to Temple four years ago. Uh, currently, he is working in the Professor uh, Rosinski's group. Uh, he is involved in uh, development and applications of uh, various linear response, TDDFT, and many body perturbation theory methods. Uh, today, he will talk about uh, model exchange correlation kernels uh, based on uh, local ingredients and their usage uh, to compute uh, the optical spectra of solids. Now I give the floor uh, to Santos. Santos, you may start now. Good luck. Uh, thank you, Dr. Niraj, uh, for the nice introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I will be talking about exchange correlation kernels with uh, density-based ingredients. Uh, here is the outline of my talk. Uh, I will start with the motivation to our work. Uh, then I will talk about the methodology and computational details uh, for computing the uh, optical spectra. Uh, later on uh, in the presentation, uh, I will talk about the results and conclusions. Uh, let's begin with the motivation uh, to our work. Uh, there is a growing interest uh, in the optical absorption spectra in the field of uh, condensed matter physics uh, for various uh, reasons. Uh, actually, uh, they can be used to uh, characterize materials uh, the spectra uh, provide the essential information about the electronic structure of semiconductors and insulators. Uh, they also provide the basis uh, for a vast range of technical applications, including uh, light emitting uh, devices, laser technology, and photovoltaics. Uh, in such uh, context, it is very important uh, uh, to compute the optical absorption spectra uh, and we have uh, uh, various uh, theoretical approaches uh, to study the spectra. Uh, uh, the first one is uh, many body perturbation theory, uh, particularly the GWBAC approach. This approach is accurate, uh, but computationally uh, very expensive. Uh, in such scenario, uh, there is another uh, theoretical approach, which is uh, time dependent density functional theory. Uh, uh, now I will uh, uh, briefly explain why uh, we choose uh, TDDFT over the GWBAC approach. Uh, uh, it uh, may not be feasible uh, uh, to explore the optical uh, properties of systems that require supercell and to perform high throughput calculations with the GWBAC approach. Uh, However, uh, having the accurate exchange uh, correlations kernel within TDDFT uh, is a good alternative uh, over uh, the GWBAC approach. Uh, some recent exchange correlation kernels uh, give accurate uh, bound excitons for bulk materials. Uh, uh, now, uh, I will uh, talk about the methodology uh, for compute, computing the optical spectra uh, within the TDDFT. Uh, I will start with the linear, linear response uh, theory. Within uh, linear response theory, the interacting density-density response function of a many body system is defined by equation one, uh, where uh, this uh, delta n represents the density change or fluctuation uh, induced by the external field. Uh, likewise, the non-interacting or consam density density response function is given by equation two, uh, where uh, the effective potential includes the Hardy potential and exchange correlation potential. 
uh, the quantum uh, response function uh, can be expanded in frequency space in terms of eigenstates and eigenvalues. Uh, the difference uh, in the eigenvalues uh, this term uh, is nothing uh, but the acceleration energy. Uh, is uh, we clearly see that uh, uh, this uh, uh, quantum uh, response function has the poles uh, at the quantum uh, excitation energies uh, of the system. Uh, similarly, uh, the interacting linear response function will also have the poles at the true excitation energies of the system. Uh, the response function uh, will diverge. Uh, that means uh, it gives uh, the peak in the spectrum when there is a perturbation uh, at the excitation energy. Uh, so the response function is uh, uh, very important uh, to have the spectrum uh, and for the excitation uh, uh, excited uh, properties. Uh, with the very famous uh, equation in TDDFT, that is uh, Dyson's equation, uh, the interacting uh, density density response function uh, can be related to the uh, non-interacting response function uh, through a very important uh, term here. Uh, which is uh, the exchange correlation kernel. Uh, so once we have the exchange correlation kernel, uh, then we can have the response function uh, through Dyson's equation. Uh, this will be uh, very helpful uh, for uh, study the spectra. Uh, uh, in, well, uh, in this slide, I will talk about the macroscopic uh, dielectric uh, function. Uh, actually, the optical properties of an arbitrary many electron system are determined uh, by the macroscopic dielectric function at the optical limit uh, given by this equation. Uh, that means uh, the inverse of the uh, inverse dielectric matrix at the optical limit uh, is uh, simply the microscopic uh, dielectric function. Uh, so uh, uh, this equation leads us uh, to find the inverse dielectric matrix given by equation seven. Uh, uh, in this equation, uh, there is a term which represents the uh, Fourier uh, coefficients of the density density response function. Uh, that means uh, once we uh, calculate the density density response function uh, from this uh, Dyson, Dyson's equation with the help of uh, this exchange correlation kernel, uh, we'll have the uh, inverse dielectric matrix. Uh, consequently, we can uh, determine the macroscopic dielectric function, uh, which will be helpful or uh, which gives us the optical properties of the many electron system. Uh, so uh, uh, we need to uh, 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 approximate the exchange correlation uh, kernel. Uh, now, uh, in this slide, I will talk about the exchange correlation kernel. Uh, actually, it is defined as the functional derivative of the uh, exchange correlation potential uh, with respect to the density, which is evaluated at the unperturbed uh, ground state density. Uh, actually, uh, the ground state, uh, uh, the, the exact form of ground state uh, exchange correlation potential is unknown. Uh, so the exchange correlation functional, uh, sorry, exchange correlation kernel is also unknown. Uh, however, uh, accurate uh, exchange correlation kernel uh, can be obtained uh, uh, from uh, many body perturbation theory or by uh, satisfying exact constraints uh, using the paradigm of the uniform electron gas. Uh, in the uh, random phase approximation, uh, we say the exchange correlation kernel uh, to uh, zero. Uh, there is another uh, approximation for the exchange correlation kernel, uh, which is adiabatic or locally special uh, local density uh, approximation. Uh, this is the simplest approximation for the exchange correlation kernel. It is the simplest in the sense that it is independent of uh, both wave vector and frequency. Uh, the general expression for the uh, exchange uh, correlation kernel in this approximation is given by equation nine. Uh, here, uh, this term is uh, exchange correlation energy for particle of the uniform electron gas. Uh, this uh, kernel uh, fails to capture the excitonic effects uh, for semiconductors and insulators uh, since uh, it doesn't have the correct uh, long range behavior. 
uh, that is uh, the behavior of one over q square at the optical limit. Uh, instead of showing this nature, uh, this kernel uh, becomes constant at the optical limit, that is when q tends to zero. Uh, in such uh, scenario, uh, there is uh, the, the body at all uh, constructed, uh, the long range uh, corrected uh, kernel. Uh, they have uh, constructed both version of uh, like uh, static and dynamic version of the kernel. Uh, here we emphasis uh, only on the static version. Uh, the general form of the static version of the LRC kernel is given by equation uh, 10. Uh, here, uh, this term alpha LRC is uh, ultra non locality coefficient, uh, which is the material dependent uh, term. Uh, since uh, it is uh, dependent on the dielectric constant on the material of the material. Uh, uh, well, uh, there are uh, 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 there is another uh, kernel uh, which is uh, JLM with gap model JGM kernel. Uh, the original uh, form of the JGM kernel is appro approximated uh, is uh, uh, this equation equation eleven at the optical limit. Uh, it also shows the correct uh, long range behavior. Uh, this kernel uh, includes the fundamental band gap uh, is a parameter. When this parameter is uh, zero, uh, then uh, this kernel is accurate for the homogeneous electron gas. With some uh, modification or simplification in the JGM kernel uh, based on the original uh, previous work, uh, the, the, the Terenzev et al. Uh, proposed a new kernel uh, you know, whose uh, name is uh, JGMS kernel, which uh, we also use uh, to obtain the optical spectra uh, in our work. Uh, also, uh, the, the, uh, the, the work from uh, Terenzev et al. Uh, uses uh, a density gradient uh, in their kernel and they name the kernel uh, JGMG. Uh, well, uh, in this slide, uh, I will start uh, talking about uh, non-local energy optimized kernel, uh, the new kernel. Uh, here is the short range uh, version of the kernel. Uh, this is exchange-like uh, kernel. Uh, the general form of this equation, uh, the, 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 this uh, uh, short range version of the new kernel is uh, given by equation uh, 12 in this slide. Uh, here, the important term J sigma is nothing, uh, but the ratio of bone which occur uh, kinetic energy density uh, to the uh, cone sam kinetic, kinetic energy density. Uh, in this uh, uh, version of the neo kernel, uh, there is a C parameter, uh, which is very important. Uh, it is uh, included uh, because the random phase approximation uh, underestimates the correlation energy. Uh, so uh, the inclusion of this uh, C parameter uh, in this uh, version of the neo kernel uh, provides a unique fit uh, to the exact uh, second order exchange contribution uh, to the correlation energy for the uniform electron gas. Uh, although the short range neo kernel improves the structural and energetic properties of the materials, uh, it doesn't satisfy the proper optical limit, uh, which is uh, necessary uh, for the excited state properties. Uh, that uh, leads us uh, uh, to uh, construct another uh, version of the neo kernel, which is the long range version. Uh, we constructed this by uh, this kernel by satisfying uh, some exact uh, constraint uh, for the optical limit. Uh, and the general form of this kernel is given uh, by this equation. Here, uh, we include uh, the important parameter. We call this screening parameter whose value uh, is greater or equals to zero and less than one. And this parameter uh, is, uh, can be constructed using uh, the uh, GGA ingredient or uh, meta GGA ingredient. The inclusion of this screening parameter uh, uh, helps us to uh, de uh, describe uh, the more inhomogeneous environment. Uh, the uh, long range behavior uh, that is one over Q square at the optical limit uh, was absent uh, in the short range uh, uh, new version of the kernel. Uh, the inclusion uh, of this kernel also um, uh, reduce, uh, remove this uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, the long range uh, corrected uh, the correct uh, long range behavior is also included in this person uh, the short range property uh, is correct uh, for uh, material uh, which has complete long range screening uh, but not for an insulator or molecule which has incomplete uh, long range screening so in this uh, scenario, uh, the inclusion of this screening parameter uh, uh, helps us to describe uh, the properties for both uh, metals and uh, insulator or molecule. Uh, now, uh, in this slide, I will talk uh, about the uh, screening term, how we construct it. Uh, actually, uh, first, uh, we use the living loo model uh, to relate the dielectric constant of a solid uh, to its band gap. Uh, and we have this equation. Uh, here uh, in this equation, this is the fundamental band gap. Uh, but uh, we define a local band gap uh, in the spirit of uh, Krieger et al. Uh, yeah, with, the, with this equation. Uh, and with the help of equation uh, 13 and 14, uh, uh, the new kernel yields uh, the is the screening term uh, given by uh, this uh, equation uh, equation uh, 16 instead of using uh, this screening term uh, directly we will use the screening term uh, in this form uh, to remove the uh, divergence uh, issue uh, then we simply uh, replace the value of y uh, uh, from this equation uh, by uh, this term uh, beta times x to the power 4 uh, for the correct exchange like uh, scaling. Uh, and we'll have the final version of the uh, uh, form of the screening term A is given by equation 17. Uh, based on the two uh, local ingredients in the new uh, kernel, uh, will have uh, two forms uh, and the screening parameter finally have this uh, form uh, where uh, this EX uh, can be both uh, like a GGA ingredient or the meta GGA ingredient. And these uh, two parameters, uh, beta and eta, uh, can be tuned uh, to the optical spectra. Here is the computer, computational details uh, of our work. Uh, we use the Avenid codes uh, for the ground state properties or DFT calculations, and we use uh, the AMBO codes for the excited ones. Uh, we choose the uh, energy cutoff is 16 Hartree. Uh, we choose the number of Z vectors is uh, 130. We choose the KMH of 16 by 16 by 16, Monkers pack. Uh, the SGF tolerance A, uh, was taken is uh, 10 to the power negative uh, 6 Hartree. The total number of occupied and unoccupied bands are uh, 60. Uh, the consum response function uh, was uh, calculated in the framework of Caesar operated uh, corrected uh, density functional theory uh, with this, uh, implementing with this, uh, where uh, this term is uh, the experimental fundamental band gap. Uh, we did this uh, because the, obviously the density functional calculation underestimate the band gap. Uh, now uh, that ha I have uh, uh, described uh, the methodology and the computational details uh, for our uh, calculations uh, to the uh, for the optical spectra, and now I uh, I am going to present the results uh, of our work. Uh, uh, actually, uh, first uh, we find found the values of optimal optimal values of beta and eta. Uh, for uh, both version of neo kernel with the help of uh, contour plots uh, shown in figure one uh, and figure two. Uh, this is uh, for the, the figure one is for the neo action version uh, for the material silicon carbide. And this is uh, for, for the uh, same material, uh, but for the different version of neo kernel, which is neo X2. Uh, so uh, what we did uh, actually is we uh, find the minimum deviation of the ultra non-locality coefficient of the neo kernel with respect to that of the LRC kernel. Uh, 
in the contour plots, uh, the different regions, uh, the different color uh, represents the different regions of deviation. Obviously, this region is the uh, region of minimum, minimum deviations, and they are the points uh, which give us the minimum uh, deviation of alpha with respect to alpha LRC. And the values uh, corresponding uh, to these points, uh, uh, we find uh, the optimal values of beta and eta. We did the same kind of analysis and find the values of beta and eta uh, for new AX version as well. Uh, this is a similar plot uh, for another material, which is aluminum phosphide. Uh, this is for the new X1 version, and this is for the new X2 version. We did same analysis to find the optimal values of beta and eta. This is uh, the uh, control plots uh, for another material diamond. And we did the same analysis uh, to find the optimal values of beta and eta. Uh, here in this slide, uh, in the table one, uh, we present uh, the we present the uh, set of optimal values of beta and eta uh, that gives the lowest deviation of alpha with respect to alpha LRC. Uh, uh, is uh, this this column uh, represents uh, uh, the values for alpha LRC uh, for uh, the materials we studied, uh, and these are for the values of alpha for new kernel. Uh, we clearly see that uh, these are uh, pretty much uh, close to each, each other. And these are the values of beta and uh, eta uh, we took for our, uh, to calculate the optical spectra, which we have found uh, from the uh, contour plots. And in table two, we present the experimental and calculated values of uh, the dielectric constant. Uh, uh, these are the experimental values, and these are the range of the calculated uh, values of dielectric constants. Uh, we uh, present the range of the values uh, here uh, uh, because these are not uh, only for the optimal values of beta and eta. We present uh, the whole set of uh, beta and eta uh, for the values of dielectric constant here. Uh, here, uh, the uh, we present uh, our results of the optical absorption spectra uh, from uh, neocarnets uh, with two local ingredients. And the results are compared with the spectra of the experiments. Uh, here, uh, the red and green uh, uh, curve represents the new X1 and new X2 uh, uh, results. Uh, this dark one is the uh, GWBSC spectra. Uh, the blue one is the experimental one and the gray curve represents the RPA result. Uh, from these plots, we clearly see that uh, we find uh, an excellent agreement with the GWBSC uh, and experimental spectra. Uh, for the uh, random phase approximation, uh, uh, for the uh, main excitonic peak uh, position, uh, we clearly see that uh, it is uh, blue shifted uh, if we compare this with the experimental uh, peak. Uh, here is the, uh, actually, uh, this is uh, for the material silicon carbide, uh, and here is the similar uh, result for the for another material, which is uh, aluminum phosphide. Uh, obviously, this is the imaginary part uh, of the directory for microscopic directory function, and this is the real part. Uh, and we again find the excellent agreement uh, uh, with the experimental spectra uh, for the new version of the kernels, uh, both versions of the kernels. Uh, RPA again shows the blue a blue sheet to the experiment. Uh, this is uh, the similar result uh, for the uh, another material, carbon diamond. Uh, we find uh, the similar uh, results again. Uh, now, uh, in this slide, uh, I will talk about the uh, Eastern uh, effects uh, uh, on the optical absorption spectra uh, for uh, some uh, Eastern bulks. Uh, uh, here, uh, uh, from this uh, plot, uh, from the both of the plots, uh, we clearly see that uh, the random phase approximation, uh, the GGMS kernel, uh, the, both the version of the new kernels, describe the relative shift of the spectra uh, quite well uh, under a wide range of strain. If you compare this uh, with the uh, GW uh, BSC result, uh, the green one, uh, with the uh, new version of the result, 
Uh, however, uh, the uh, long range corrected kernel and JJF kernels uh, 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 break down under uh, compressive strains, uh, uh, even though uh, they give uh, the accurate position uh, for the first excitonic peak of tensile strains. Uh, here is the similar result uh, for the strain uh, aluminum phosphide. Uh, and uh, uh, for this material, uh, the random phase approximation, uh, JGM S kernel, JGM G kernel, and both version of the neo kernels uh, describe the relative shift of the spectra uh, quite well under a wide range of strains. Uh, uh, however, the, again, uh, the long range kern uh, kernel uh, uh, break down under uh, tensile strain. Uh, however, it uh, predicts accurate position for the first exciting peak of compressive strain. Uh, in the compressive region, uh, compressive strain, all of them, uh, all of the uh, methods uh, predict quite accurate results. Uh, here is the uh, result for strain bulks of uh, uh, carbon diamond. Uh, here, obviously, you know, the JGMG kernel uh, rate shifts the position of the first exogenic peak uh, from a positive 6% of strain to negative 6% of strain. Uh, uh, again, uh, the long range corrected kernel and JGMS kernel do not predict uh, accurate position uh, of the first excitonic peak under uh, various strains. Uh, uh, and again, in, the, in another material, uh, the new version of kernel uh, described the relative shift of the spectra uh, quite well uh, from like a positive uh, six percentage to the negative six percentage of his strain. Uh, we, we believe that the inclusion of local ingredients in our new version of kernels uh, um, uh, helps to predict the results uh, uh, better uh, than uh, like uh, the long range uh, corrected kernel, which do not have any local ingredients uh, in the kernel. Uh, here uh, is the conclusion of our work. Uh, actually, uh, we have tested the long range uh, form of the new kernels uh, with two local ingredients. Uh, the, we have concluded that the screening uh, component of the kernel can be constructed using uh, GGA and meta GGA ingredients. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, from the control plots, uh, uh, we, we found the minimum deviation uh, for all the materials, uh, like uh, when eta is close to four uh, in all of these uh, materials. Uh, so uh, this is uh, another uh, conclusion of our work uh, for the uh, uh, GGA ingredient or the new X1 version. Uh, the tuning parameters beta and eta are closely related, as I already uh, described uh, from the control plot. Uh, also, uh, we find an excellent agreement with the GWBSC spectra within the neo kernels uh, for both strained and non strained bulks. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, the density based ingredients uh, are necessary uh, to uh, describe the uh, strain environment. Uh, there is another conclusion, uh, which is like uh, neo kernel is a static kernel, uh, and to capture the proper optical limit required for the wide gap insulators, uh, we need a genuine interplay of uh, local field defects and frequent frequency dependence. Uh, 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 I have mentioned, uh, I have told that like uh, we uh, found that uh, eta equals to four uh, provides accurate e spectra. That means. Uh, our uh, uh, screening parameter term is a one parameter free. Uh, I mean, they have uh, beta and eta as a parameters. Uh, if uh, eta is four, then it is uh, one parameter free. Uh, there is only one parameter, which is beta. Uh, so uh, we, uh, our goal is uh, to make our kernel uh, that are parameter free. Uh, so uh, to do so, uh, we need some further test uh, to uh, do uh, like our neo kernel parameter free. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, I would like to thank my advisor, uh, Professor Adrian Ruzinski, 
uh, Professor Jun P. Pardew, uh, Professor Hong Tang. I'd like to thank Dr. Niras K. Nepal uh, for all the help. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Uh, Santosh Adhikari, uh, and my friend, uh, Siki Ruan and Bimal Neupane. Uh, I would also like to thank my funding agency, and I would like to thank uh, Owl's Nest uh, for providing all the resources uh, to do the calculations. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone.